Uh, hi, um, my name is Sigal Owen, and I am happy to be taking to be doing the um, printing for painters workshop today. Um, I am a practicing artist, a painter, um, based in London, and today I'm going to be using. Uh, my paints. These are Intaglio printing inks and they're all based. However, you can use um, acrylic, just make sure that you keep it wet. Um, and this is my palette where I've placed my paints. I also have a roller and um, an area to roll out the paint. And I have my acetate and a plate. Um, yep. Oh, and some paintbrushes and some source images. So, you know, if you want to use a source image as a figurative uh, painter myself, I often sometimes work from photographs and drawings, etc. And today I've just got a small selection there. So the first bit of uh, printing that I'm going to be doing is basically using the same color. So like it's going to be a traditional, more traditional mono print. Um, and for that, I have placed some of my paint on here just by uh, rolling it out and I have a brush and I'm going to roll across it. So this is gonna be using one color. And just try and get it as evenly as possible across the roller. And then I'm just gonna place it on my acetate. Before beginning, I made a square with masking tape just so that I would have you know, a space that I'm gonna use because I'm using A4 paper today, A4 printer paper. I've made it so that it can be um, in the middle of that paper. Obviously, if you've got a bigger piece, you can use as much as you want. If you don't have acetate um, or perspex, then you can use something like, um, you know, something else like a picture frame glass or something like that. And those also pick up quite well. So now that I've covered all of the area, I'm going to um, start to work into it using my paintbrush. So I have a really lovely image of a beautiful sculpture from Rome uh, from a time that I visited. So I'm going to use that as kind of my beginning image. However, a lot of people prefer to do something like you can have a theme like, uh, you know, the seaside or you can have a more abstract theme. Because these ten, everything tends to look quite good in this medium. I also have, um, sorry, some Q-tips that help me to take away some of the paint alongside the paint brushes. You can use almost anything to make a mark in this process, including rags or whatever else it is that you have to hand. It's quite good because whatever you actually draw, it will be mirror image. Uh, when you actually put the paper on top, it will come like backwards. So you're always going to be surprised even if you are working from an existing image because it won't come out perfectly. So I'm going to pretend this sculpture is actually just on the beach <laughs> by putting a nice little horizon line in here. If you prefer to work, you can work in like a pencil or something to get a nice clean line. But Q-tips are particularly good because, um, you know, they're pretty inexpensive and um, they're really good for making interesting marks. If you are using something like acrylic, you may, you know, find that like by testing, you'll find out how long you have to work in it. Oil will give you naturally a little bit longer. But the whole idea is not to spend too much time um, with these and just to make something that's interesting. Because once you've done one print, then you can see how it looks and you can add onto it again. I often work back into prints to try and get something that I consider to be interesting. I might use a little rag to take off some more of this here. You can use tissue or anything else. Make some interesting foliage marks. Pretend we've got some green there. Going with that. There we go. Okay, so I think this is a pretty all right image to try and start with and see how it comes up. So I'm just going to take my uh, piece of paper and uh, yeah, and place this on the top here. So I made a frame earlier and a frame is really good at making your print look just that little bit more professional because it means that all the edges where I've gone over won't show up and it'll make it look like I was a bit neater. 
So I'm just going to put this here and I'm going to pick up my massive roller just to take the paint off. So I'm just going to roll across here really quickly and you can use your hand to go like this. I have this little plastic tool which I'll use and that makes sure that you mean that you get every little bit that you can out of it because some of the lines will be more delicate, some of them will be more obvious. And by just rolling over again, it makes sure that like, you get everything out. So here we go. This is the print that I've ended up with, which I think is quite nice. Weird. Yeah, but lovely. Um, and like I said, you can, for the second one, you don't have to spend a lot of time. So there's some bits which maybe I want to just, maybe you just want to go over a line again. So all you need is to simply go over it again with a bit of a Q-tip. You can literally go over it and then you can end up with a slightly lighter uh, looking tool. So. In this area, I like the um, I like the lines that have come up, but I want to make some more slightly dramatic marks, so I can just work into them really quickly and literally roll it back off. And maybe we can have a nice little sun here. There we go, which will be really interesting. And then I'm just going to put this on top again, really quickly, and roll over it. So this is one of these things where it's quite quick, but you get some really cool ideas and it's really good if you're just trying to work out how things will work. Okay. And taking it up, it's a lot echoier and we've got a little swirly sun in the corner and it picks up a bit more details because there's less paint on it. The second kind of print that you can make with the same process is by adding paint. So I'm gonna put this aside um, for a moment and use a plate. This can still be done if you're, you know, if you've got time, you can clean off your um, palette and use the same palette. You don't need a secondary palette, but today I'm just gonna go straight onto here. And this is um, a process of simply adding paint. So I'm just going to um, add some more paint onto the, uh, onto the surface. So instead of taking it away, I'm gonna Add, let's say, a green background. <laughs> um, there we go. And maybe using the same imagery, I can just uh, draw a couple of figures in. If you are using oil-based paint, be sure to make sure that you uh, store your rags very safely. If you're using acrylic, that shouldn't be an issue and you can just continue on. So I'm changing these sculptures into people. <laughs> So the original sculpture is of a mother and child and it's just outside the Danish Academy in Rome and it was really beautiful. Um, and worth seeing if you get a chance. Most of the time within my own practice I tend to work from images of friends and family um, however, they often like overlap with themes from art history, like um, such as these ones and other ones. Um, so I really enjoy looking at other pieces of work and making connections across them. So I'm just going to add some dark bits, lots of shadow, let's say. Um, probably a bit more than there is, really. But that's the beauty of painting. You can just make up your own thing towards the end. <laughs> So with adding paint, the watery it is, the more it will move when you print, so be mindful of that. The thicker it is, the more it will stay um, when you put your paper over it. So I'm going to leave half the print almost blank. Uh, maybe with just a little bit of a, uh, of a bit of blue to make it look slightly sky-like. Um, yeah. 
slightly sky-like. The nice thing is wherever you leave space on um, something like a mono print or a plate, it will come up as um, white, so you don't need to add onto it, which is quite good for saving time and paint. Uh, So this should make all these marks that you can see with the rag will actually come up on the paper when we print it, hopefully. The best paper to use is cheap printer paper because it picks up the most because it's not too thick. With better papers, you have to test and see what works the best. Get some paper now and see how this comes out. So with this, be careful how you place it just because, like I said, it will move about and uh, your painting will change a lot. Here we go. So just simply rolling over and over, relatively gently. Okay. Okay. And then lift it up and you have a whole image. Except for, like I said, where you put too much water, it can sometimes end up blending in a bit more than you'd like. So, but I still think it's a pretty interesting image. And um, fortunately, I can just go back in. And if I want something to be a little bit more solid, like this area here, I can add that in simply by going over it again. So on here, I want it to look a bit more like a tree trunk and add up into this space here. and maybe a little bit more detail here. There we go. And I can... Uh, yeah. Okay, let's uh, try this again then. Put this on top and roll over one more time. Quite a lot of detail and there you go so you can end up with some quite interesting interpretations of the same thing um, so yeah some quite interesting interpretations of the same image um, relatively quickly uh, yeah so that's all been from the same image and it's really great for some abstract things simply by you know using rags etc so in the uh, workshop today we've just used those two processes but you can do so much more with them um, you know by introducing different materials leaves silhouettes and other things so I hope that you'll continue to explore it more so my name is Sigalala Owen and this has been a workshop for hospital rooms I hope you guys enjoyed it